Hi, welcome back to the Pen and Ink Wall again and thank you ever so much for joining me to watch my videos. I'm so excited to be doing this again and I've been really enjoying it so here's the third video I'm going to be doing now and the third pen that I'm going to be looking at. So this is um, again another Caveco pen that I was sent very kindly by um, the team up there over in Germany and this is one that I really fancied when I saw the look of the pictures. Very different colour scheme, quite an interesting sort of concept and when I had the opportunity to get one to look at I really jumped on it. So today I'm going to be looking at the tiniest pen I've seen actually, the tiniest fountain pen I've seen and look at it, this is how tiny we're talking. This is the Lilliput, the Caveco Lilliput and they call this the fire blue. You can see it is literally about as long as my middle finger really tiny little pen but we'll have a look at it in a little more detail and we'll show it a bit more close up and you'll be able to see the colours on this material here and why they call it fire blue so I hope you can join me very shortly and we'll come back and have a look at it again thanks welcome back now as I said in the introduction this really is a little pen um, it's tiny, there's no getting away from it. I, I was really desperate to have a look at this pen and was so excited when I had the opportunity from Caveco to have a look at this pen um, for two reasons. One, I wanted to see the size of it. Two, this colour um, and this effect that you'll see on here now is absolutely stunning. But still when it arrived I was still shocked as to how small this pen really is. Um, let me put this into context a little bit. So this is, with the cap on, this is 97 millimetres. It's just under 10 centimetres long. Um, without the cap, it's just 88 millimetres. And when you post it, it actually becomes 125 millimetres then, which this pen was made to be posted. You can see here right at the end, if I get closer, it's got the ridges here at the end, which is I'll show you now shortly where this pen, where the cap screws on. It's a bit like the Twisby Mini, it was designed to be posted. Um, but width wise this is just nine millimeters wide. It's a tiny pen. As I said, let's see if we can put this in perspective a little bit. So another small pen, I've been looking at sort of small pens, so another small pen really. This is the Gaveco Sport, um, but still shorter than that pen with caps on. Um, the decks that I had a look at not that long ago Still, I would class this as being a pocket pen, but again, bigger. And then we're getting into two sort of standard size pens then that I've looked at on my channel, well, one of them recently, the other one a little while ago. Here's the new Twisby Eco. That's a much bigger pen. And then a lot of us have seen these, you know, in so many different varieties. For me, I love them. Sometimes it's a love-hate relationship for some. I absolutely love the Lamy collection. Again, the Lamy I think is on, well it is pretty much the exact same size as the Eco and much, much bigger than this little lily put. So I'll put those aside for a minute and let's concentrate on this little beauty. Um, we have to start by looking at this colour. This is why I was excited about this. So this is the Caveco lily put and they call this fire blue. So this is, it's a heat treated stainless steel material. So this has been, had a, a flame I assume sort of put to it and it's left these, almost like these sort of scorch marks. If you could have a look, you see the different colours then that come out of this. It has got a, you know, a hint of, it's got golds and blues and brass and bronze. You see the blue at the end here. It's quite dark then down this way and I, I love it, you know, no two pens of this style are going to be the same because they're going to come out differently. And this is definitely the smallest pen that I've ever seen and ever known. Um, it's it's like a bullet really, it's very much shaped like a bullet. It fits together to create this sort of seamless link really throughout it. So if you have a look at the cap here, I don't know whether we can do this without the the light coming from the side here today. Um, it's got a bit dark here this evening. So this is, you can see right at the end here, it's got the Caveco, so Caveco Co, the Caveco company 
logo at the tip of this cap and then right down this other end as I mentioned earlier the little ridges here where the cap will tie onto that so let's have a look at this and open this up so it's a twist pen so really secure this has been in my bag for a little while now and actually it isn't spilling out any ink but this effect let's put that cap down this effect carries on right the way through here so even the grip section here is made from the same materials and has the same effect across there and as you say just the ridges there from where the cap's been put on let's have a look at that nib so this is a Caveco stainless steel nib we got that in focus yep it's a pretty nib of this flower this sort of um, almost like this leaf floral decoration across the ridges here and then the Caveco logo and this is an extra fine nib and as I said what you do then is you get the cap and you screw the cap onto the end which makes this what was the measurement it's 125 millimeters then so let's have a look at the how that compares then if I took the cap off this Twisby they become sorry I'm gonna have to zoom out there a little bit they become more comparable in size then lengthwise these two pens as I said, the pen was made to be posted, it's designed to be posted, but also for you to be able to carry around on a day-to-day -day basis without taking up any space. It would fit in your jeans pocket, in any sort of pocket, in any bag, in a tiny little front pocket of your handbag, in the lipstick pocket, anything, you know, it would go for men. Actually, I think this really is, this is what attracted me to this pen, and particularly the colours on this, is this works equally for a man or a woman. Um, I think it's pretty... But I also think it's really fascinating. So I think, you know, it's, it's quite a talking point. It's solid. Weight-wise, it's not much, actually. It's 14 grams with the cap on. It's 7 grams without the cap. Personally, I couldn't write with it without the cap. But say you wouldn't want to. But it's, it's comfortable. Okay, let's be honest. For me, um, my nails were not designed <laughs> to write with a pen that's this thin. And the grip section is quite thin and my nails are getting in the way but it, that's my choice obviously to have to, you know, to keep my nails like this um, so I most people don't have nails this long and it really wouldn't be a problem at all um, I say the mottled effect on it is beautiful I can't really think of anything else to, you know, to sort of say really I mean this is Kveco kindly sent this to me to have a look at and I'm really glad that they did the effect on it is beautiful. We'll have a look at a writing sample with it shortly. Again, though, if you've got any questions about it, I haven't answered in here. I'm sort of mindful I don't want these videos to go on too long, really. There's only so much you can say. But if you've got any specific questions you want me to answer to you, then please just let me know. But we'll do a writing sample, and I'll get back with you very, very shortly. Welcome back. Let's have a look at a writing sample of this pen. So this, as I said, this is the Caveco Lilliput and they call it Fire Blue. The one thing I did forget to show you earlier when we were looking at it closely was how this fills up. So I'll just do that very quickly for you now. It unscrews here at the grip section and takes standard international cartridges. I've chosen a diamine cartridge here. I have to say that this was one pen that I had that didn't write straight out of the box. I did have to flush this out a couple of times. And I had to find, I tried a couple of different inks before I got one that worked perfectly in here. And this was a diamine cartridge then that I ink that I used in here. It needs a wetter ink, I find. The, pe the nib I do find, you know, a little drier than some of the other pens that I've had. Um, so it's about getting that pen and ink combo right, I think. So it's to say, it does take small cartridges. It's a small pen, it's not going to take anything much bigger. You know, this isn't a pen that you know like the eco that i looked at previously that holds a ton of ink you can get converters for them personally i choose not to because i don't find that i can fill the converters up well enough really with enough ink that it sort of almost becomes a little pointless what i tend to do is just take the cartridge back out of here use a syringe that i bought you know a set of syringes that i bought very cheaply with 
blunt nibs on them or blunt needle points off the web off eBay I found and I just refill them with whichever ink that I want to use then I just you know I've flushed a few cartridges out and I just keep them as spares so I'll just do a quick writing sample and then I'll get on my way so this is the Caveco Lilliput as I said they call this let me get this back into shot fire blue I'll get a little closer in there and this is an extra fine nib and this is diamine mediterranean Neon blue ink. I'm just about to see that all. Yeah. So if we have a look at some line and width, I don't know if you've noticed, it does still skip this nib. I may have a sort of chat with Caveco actually, you know, about this. It does still skip every now and then on the downstroke. Um, it may need flushing out again. It's a, it is the first full ink of you know full cartridge that I've used on this, so I haven't used it an awful lot. I haven't been writing an awful lot recently, so um, hasn't had an awful lot of use to be able to see. As I said, though, as you can see, it is a dry. That ink has dried very quickly. It doesn't put down a huge ton of ink at all on this paper, and um, this is Roger paper as always. Um, line variation. If you put some pressure on, you see you will get some on there. And it's a good Caveco German nib. You can't go wrong with, you know, I find actually you can't go wrong with the Caveco nibs and with this the with the German nibs actually. They they write very well. It is a steel nib. I say it is a hundred pounds, so you know, a steel nib on a hundred pound pen. There are some manufacturers by there that you know maybe you'd get a gold nib at that sort of price point. But I think, as I say, with this pen, you're paying for the material that's being used to make the body of this pen and to make it look as it does. Personally, I love it, I absolutely love it. Um, I you know, sort of think that it's a pen that you would keep its timeless it wouldn't really go out of fashion it's not something that you'd look at and go it's not really my taste in sort of five ten years time it's something that's to say it would if it gets beaten up it will actually look even better i think from it um i don't think i can sort of add anything else to say on this really but any comments please let me know anything you'd like me to have a look at please let me know and leave in the comments box below i'll um get back to you sort of shortly with some more reviews I've got a couple more pens I'm going to be looking at doing and maybe if anybody thinks they'd be interested in looking up some ink reviews then again please let me know on that and maybe I can have a look at doing those as well I hope you all have a good few days ahead and I'll speak to you soon bye bye